Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's good? We are here. You guys see the topic of the day. Um, what's up, Sal? I see you in the comments already uh, replying to the question. Dev, uh, dev by stoppage, 10 to 12 rounds. That's not a bad prediction, actually. Not a bad one. All right. Um, what's up, everybody, man? It's Monday. Back to work. For, for most of us, you know, I hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, I actually thought the fight was this week. <laughs> I actually woke up this morning wanting to uh, begin my film study so I can do a breakdown for the fight. And then I went and looked at the schedule and saw that the fight is next week, <laughs> which is all good. It gives me a little bit more time. All right, but do we have we do have a fight coming up? Jared Anderson returns to the ring, uh, I believe this Saturday. And uh, you know, I really like Jared Anderson, man. I just I don't know if he loves the sport, you know. I don't think he loves the sport like that. Based on what he's uh said in the past, you know. Um, it's not even about getting in trouble, you know, getting in trouble. He's been in trouble. I think, you know, he's been in trouble with the law a couple of times. Um, as far as like, I guess, driving wild and reckless. But um, it's not even about that, you know. I mean, that's bad too. But um, it's just, you know, when he gives interviews, it just seems like he doesn't really want to do this, man. Um and he said it himself, you know, he said he wants to be out the game very early, like mid-20s. So I think he has potential to be a star, but I don't think he loves it. But he fights this weekend. And I will most likely be covering the fight live. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Sorry again. Sorry. Give me a second. Hold on. Let me fill my notes real quick. All right, I'm back. All right, um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I'll let you guys know if I cover the fight this weekend. All right, um, Jared Anderson. So next week, Ryan Garcia is going to fight Devin Haney. This is going to be at 140. And I guess it's going to be for Devin Haney's, uh, let's see. Let's see, what title does Devin Haney hold at 140? What, did he, what title did he take from Regis Pro Greg? Is it the WBC? Yeah, it's a WBC title. All right, this fight's going to be in Brooklyn. A couple of you guys asked if I was going to the fight. I'm probably not going to go, okay? Um, I, I said this in a previous video. Like, I kind of lost interest with all the crazy talk with Ryan. All right, just I don't feel like it's a, a – it is a real fight, but – I'm not sure to where, like, to really rate Ryan, you know? Where I'm at with him is where I'm at with Roly Romero. You know, if you guys see my video yesterday, I talked a lot about that. Like, I don't know how to rate Roly Romero. I never did, you know? I think the fact that he was a champion at 140 after coming off of a knockout loss at lightweight just go to show how much of a joke the WBA is. And when it comes to Ryan, um, I still think till this day um, that the Luke Campbell win was his best win. You know, uh, Luke was a former champion. Was he a former champion or was he a, a, cont a title contender? Luke Campbell, let's see. He lost to Yvonne Mindy. Silver title holder. Okay. 
Yeah, I know he lost to Jorge Linares for a title, okay? And then he lost to Vasil Lomacheco. So it, he he never actually helped, but he, he was involved in at least three or four title fights, right? I still think that, uh, you know, that was his best win. Why? I know he got knocked down in the fight, but he fought someone that was legit. And I think the knockdown is not a knock on him at all. I think that was the fact that he was able to get up and continue on and win the fight. I think I was impressed with that. Okay. But outside of that win, um, there's really not much there. You know, there's nothing there. There's not much there before that fight. And there's definitely nothing there after. <laughs> you know, you beat Lou Campbell. And I've said this in the past, at your highest moment, you took a break from boxing. You know, and then you took on a couple easy scraps, Manuel Tago, Javier Fortuna, and then you went straight for Tink at a catch weight at that. And it just really exposed that there's levels to this, you know, and you say what you want about Tank Davis. There's a lot of people I wanted to see him fight at one point. There's still fighters that I want to see him fight today. But Tank is an elite level fighter. You know? Uh, he just needs to prove it more so to one of the top, top tier fighters. But Tank visually is one of the elite. You know? And as many um, as flaws that he has, he looked like a boxing wizard against Ryan Garcia, you know, and that's where I'm at with Ryan. It's like he's at the level of Roley, but probably a little better, you know. Um, they're they're just they're just good because of popularity and knowing how to talk their way into a big fight and knowing how to sell a fight. You know what I mean? Like that's the way I look at these guys. They're like real boxing social media influencers. You know how like Jake Paul is like a YouTuber, like an influencer, but you have Tommy Fury, who's a real boxer, but he's more like in that same lane. Like you're not really fighting like the top dudes. You're just there because you're popular. He's kind of in that lane, but I give him credit for taking on Tank, taking on Devin, and even taking on Luke when he took him on. But who's not going to take those fights? Are they, those are big money fights. Like Devin Haney is a big money fight at this point. You know what I mean? It's a big money fight. Like Tank was a big money fight. So why wouldn't you take that fight? You know, if you're going to get pay-per-view revenue, you're going to have to take on names like this. You know what I mean? So shout out to everyone in the chat. Shout out to Sal. Shout out to Jack, Hal Dan Gore, uh, High New, Maker, Ray Back, Red, Marcus. What's up? All right. Shout out to all of you guys, man. That's here. Um. So I, I just don't know where to really rate Ryan at this point. And look, the way I look at it, when I do my breakdown, because I'm going to do it. You know, I started doing the film study this morning because I was getting ready to do it because I was thinking that the fight was this week. It's next week. The way I'm I'm looking at it right now, I'm not. I'm not going to I'm going to disassociate all the crazy talk, like all that crazy talk that Ryan has been doing, all that mental health issue talk, all the like, is he high? Is he drunk? Is he mentally stable? Is he suicidal? Is all this stuff that he's talking, all the crazy talk. I'm going to leave that out of that. Okay. Is it a factor? It could be, but I don't know. You know, because I look at it like this. Whether he's crazy or not, he's getting people to talk about him. He's actually selling the fight based on his crazy talk. You know why? Because for the past couple months or however long, the six weeks or whatever, since the presser, everybody's been talking about 
Ryan and whether or not he's crazy. And you can also add on the Derrick James stuff. You know, like what's going on, those little clips, and he's showing himself. I saw a video of him where he was uh, like, he was shadow boxing, but he was doing it in slow mo. Like, and he looked crazy, and everybody's pointing out the errors. And I'm like, yo, this is what, this is how you create buzz for a fight. We already know the history between you and Devin. So that part of it is going to sell. Devin is known. His name is linked to Tank. His name is linked to Ryan Garcia. His name is linked to Shakur Stevenson, Vasil Lomacheco. He's coming off his best performance, in my opinion, against Regis Progre. He's coming off a win against Vasil Lomachenko, controversial, but still a win. You know, going people respect him for their Cambosos wins. So he's hot right now. He's buzzing right now. So that part of it is going to sell the fight. But what Ryan is doing is selling in a different way. <laughs> and it looks kind of crazy. But maybe he is really crazy. I really don't know at this point. You know, like we're in a different time. We're in a different time. And being on the, the internet is, is what it is. You know, going on Twitter, posting on Gram, you know, posting the sparring footage, all that shit like that, that's part of the game. You know what I mean? What's up, Thirst? Uh, my mom called me a little while ago, and she asked me if I was watching the eclipse. And I told her I don't have glasses. so, And I'm not going outside to go buy some. So, you know, I'm just going to watch it on the internet. You know, when people start making content and videos on it, I'll just look at it then. You know, I've never really been into going outside and, and catching whatever is in the sky. You know, you know what I want to see? Show me a spaceship. <laughs> that's what i want to see show me show me some shit like that so show me a flying saucer so, show me something that is supposed to not be real all right i don't want to see a solar eclipse i want to see a spaceship <laughs> and i don't want to see it on the internet like i don't want to see it like i don't want to see anything that people are posting no conspiracy like show me where i can see it live with my own eyes. That's what I want to see. So I'm not going to be watching the solar eclipse today. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. So look, going back to uh, Ryan Garcia, man. Um, I'm not going to include the crazy talk. I'm just, I just like to talk about the fight. You know what I mean? The fight itself. Can he really win? You know? Can he, does he have a chance of winning? I mean, we know one advantage or one strength of his is his power. Um, he, he is powerful. He can punch. Um, he's very quick. You know, we've seen how quick his left hook is. Um, it didn't look as quick against Tank because Tank was able to predict it over and over again in their fight and duck underneath it easily and counter. You know, so as good as it, as quick as that hook is, it didn't matter against Tank. You know what I mean? And uh, Javier Fortuna, yeah, it mattered. You know, Javier Fortuna is not even a lightweight. You know, he's a super featherweight at best. You know, and he's not in his prime anymore. And it was just, you know, it was a good highlight. But, you know, it is what it is. And then we got, who was it like? Uh, Oscar Duarte. And I was watching some of that fight again this morning. And I was just watching it on replay. I had it on replay. I had it in slow-mo while I'm doing other stuff. I'm watching moments in the fight. And everybody's going to talk about the shoulder roll. I, remember, I believe I talked about it as well after watching the fight live. Um, the shoulder roll of Ryan Garcia. Um, it's not that... It's not that we haven't seen it before. It's more about like 
he was using it for like maybe two or three rounds at a time and he kept turning his back now we've seen that before in other fights but we've seen it a lot in this fight here with oscar duarte you know what i mean and as i'm watching the duarte fight because i'm watching it you know he's an orthodox fighter so is devin haney so i'm watching it for that specific reason plus it's ryan's last fight and i oscar does nothing that devin haney does like oscar you went from fortuna to tank to duarte to haney and i'm looking at it and i'm like duarte does nothing for me like it it makes me not I, I don't learn anything about this. Yes, I learned about some of the flaws that Ryan has, some of the strengths and some of his flaws. But as far as the comparison from Duarte to Haney, there is none. You know, I think Duarte would have been decent for a Roly Romero fight or even maybe an uh, Isaac Cruz kind of fight who were two potential opponents at one point. But for Haney, it's like, for starters, how do we get past the jab? You know, like, how does Ryan, with all of the technical flaws that he have, how does he get past that? You know, and that's my issue. I know Ryan has power, and I know he's very fast. Um, but he's technically flawed, very flawed, very, very flawed. It probably has more flaws and strengths you know and again yes he's fighting a, an elite fighter all right a proven one who's been in there with other elite fighters and has looked good against them i can't say the same for ryan i'm not even sure if ryan beats a pro gray does he beat an isaac cruz you know, does he beat a George Cambosos? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, um, he might be some of those guys. He might not. Um, does he beat Haney? I mean, I, I really don't know because with Haney, when I'm when, when I'm comparing opponents, I think you can put Cambosos in there, right? I can see some similarities. So Cambosos caught him with a good few left hooks, right? So watch the Cambosos, especially the first Cambosos, right? Not so much the second one. Second one, Cambosos switching throughout the fight. But if you look at the first Cambosos fight, I'm like, all right, I can see some things, some some opportunities where Ryan can land a, a big shot. Uh, also Jorge, uh, Jorge Linares. I think that is the most similar style to Ryan Garcia, you know, um, the most similarities there. You know, I think um, uh, one thing that's one thing about Jorge, even though he was older and he's been old for a while, and even by the time Haney got to him, he was, he was a lot older. But uh, Jorge Linares is known for a big cut. He, he's known for a big uh, short right hand. That's his best punch, in my opinion. Um, but he's a lot more technically sound. You know, I think he's just, uh, uh, I think his timing is better. I think his punch selection is a little better. And, and I just think that, you know, I'm not saying he would beat Ryan, a young Ryan, like an older version of him. I'm not sure he would beat Ryan. But what I will say is that I think the way he sets up his punches is a little better than Ryan. You know, I think Ryan, I think my main problem with Ryan Garcia is that he's he lacks patience he lacks patience right he wants to get the job done quickly you know um he uh he also is too eager to land the left hook and he 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 tries to do it over and over again without setting it up and he He be, it, get, it becomes an obsession. Like you can actually literally, literally watch him fight and see him wanting to land it over and over again. You know, people talk about Wilder and that how his right hand is his only weapon. And, and it's true. I agree with that. But when I watch Ryan, Ryan is willing to put himself in danger 
to land a left hook. I think there's a difference. You know, he's willing to step in. Foot position is, is, is terrible with him. And he's willing to put himself in a position to get counter just so he can risk, you know, just to take the chance and land that left hook because he wants to land it so bad, you know? And I think that is a major flaw with him, you know? And when he he fights the more advanced guys like a Tank Davis, that's where he got exposed. Jack, thank you for the donation. He said, what elite fighter has Haney fought that has looked good against outside of Loma, who are who he arguably lost to? Everyone else he's fought was old or C grade. Uh, Regis Progre and George Cambosos. Regis Progre and George Cambosos. George beat Tiafima Lopez, was undefeated, and Regis Progre coming off a bad, bad performance. Regis Progre at the time was still a top tier fighter at 140. And yes, those two fighters that I just named is better than anyone that Ryan has beaten. So that's my answer to that question. Now, everybody else, let's see, let's see Devin Haney. Everybody else, Vasil Lomachenko, George Cambosos. Joseph Diaz Jr. Joseph Diaz Jr. is at least at the level of like by the when when Devin Haney fought him, Joseph Diaz Jr. is probably at least on a level of a Luke Campbell. All right. So whether you think Luke is better when Ryan fought him, or you think Joseph is better when Devin Haney fought him at that time, he's at that level. All right, so Joseph Diaz Jr., Jorge Linares, Gamboa, yeah, all right, I, I, let's stop there. I'm going to stop there. So starting from Jorge Linares up, Devin Haney has consistently fought better fighters than Ryan Garcia. Consistently. Do you do you agree with that or you or you don't agree with that, Jack? Let me know in the comments. Like, what are, we, what are we talking about here? From Jorge Linares up, Devin Haney's fought better fighters. Oscar Duarte, I'm sorry. Nah, that ain't it, bro. Uh, who's this other guy he fought? E e Emmanuel Tago? Where does that make you? What are we doing? Tago wasn't even, a, and he's not even, did you see the size difference between those two? Like, what are we, what are we talking? Outside of Luke Campbell, like Javier Fortuna, you're talking about old. This guy is not even a lightweight. These are mismatches put into place to make Ryan look good, not make him be, not make him better. That's my point. These fights here are not made to make him improve as a fighter. Did you see improvements in the Oscar Duarte? Be honest. Did you see improvements in the Oscar Duarte fight? He's with Derrick James now, right? Did you see improvements in that fight with Ryan Garcia against that level of a fighter? If Devin Haney fought that guy, he would have got destroyed on social media. Like, we got to be honest with ourselves. You know what I mean? We got to be honest with ourselves. Like, I'm not here to bully Ryan. I'm just trying to be real, you know? And I'm open to, you know, you guys' views and thoughts on this as well. Um. Deflex, thank you as well, man. Thank and Jack, thank you by the way. But thank you by the way for um, sending me the donation. Uh, Deflex says, "Cup of coffee on me, bro." Still need a boxing memorabilia collection. <laughs> I know, uh, I know, man. <laughs> I know, and and I actually bought a stand just to do that one video because I'm gonna need something to hold my phone for me uh, when I do it. 
I know, I know, guy. I, I, I've been terrible, man. Um, but uh, thank you, Deflex. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to be honest, man. Um, in my opinion, and I, I hate to say this, but I don't think he's improved. I don't. I honestly don't. You know, I, I remember covering the Romero Duno fight. You know, I remember, I, I really remember at one point that I didn't know who was really the best between Tio, Devin, and Ryan. There was at one point, I really didn't know. You know, we know that Tio got to Loma first. So he, he got his opportunity to shine first. But you got to remember, he had fought Nakatani not too long before that where he didn't look so good. So there was a point where between those three, I really didn't know who was the best. But as time went, T.O. not just winning and losing, but he's shown me that he's elite. Even though he's had his bad performances, he's fighting nothing but good fighters consistently. And the same with Devin Haney. These are good fighters, quality fighters. Ryan, it seems like they're just – Put him in there to collect wins to save him for the big fight, which is this fight, just like Tank was. I don't feel like these fighters are making him improve. They are making him look good. They are making him look like he can't be beaten. He's too strong. He's too fast, too powerful. That was what that was what the Fortuna fight was. I was like, yo, that that punch looked so crazy that video couldn't even catch it. Right? You remember, I, I remember Showbiz the Adult making a slow-mo video of that. And he was basically like the video came to catch a punch was so fast that the video couldn't catch it. It, it like skips, even if you play it slow motion. That's how crazy that punch looked. But when he fought Tank, Tank had no problems with getting out of the way with that shot. You know, and I look at Devin to be a better defender than Tank. You know, I'm not saying he's a better fighter, but I think he's a better defender overall. I agree with you, likely. I, I agree. I think Cam Bosos, if he were to rematch Teofimo Lopez, I think he would lose. I think he fought the, ver the very worst version of Teofimo Lopez with all of the, the delays. I have to be honest. I'm always going to be honest. Even if I make a, a strong point, I'm always going to be honest. Tiafimo Lopez, that was the worst version of Tiafimo I've ever seen. And not only was it the worst version of him, but it was a terrible, terrible coaching, terrible game plan. He was clearly in there to knock this guy out in one round. He didn't respect his opponent, and that's part of the reason why he lost. But it's part of the game. Um. All right, so um, yeah, um, so let's talk more about this fight. You know, one thing, one point I made is, is that how do you get by the jab? You know, getting by the jab is hard enough. That's its own, that's its own puzzle. Getting by that jab, you know, because Haney doesn't have to press you. He doesn't have to. But Haney, one thing about Haney, you know, people try to paint him because. You know, when, when you say, when people start to um, put you in that box of being like a slick fighter, they sometimes paint this picture that you are a runner. And I don't think Haney is that. I don't think there's any fight where you didn't see Haney get in the mix, get on the inside, in the danger zone. He did it with Loma a lot more than I expected in that fight. Um, he did it with Jorge Linares. It was per there were there were there were periods in certain fights against certain fighters, even against Aregis Progre, who is a known puncher, where Haney jumped in through those combinations, through those shots that would put him, you know, in, in a position to get clipped. You know, and he got clipped by Linares. Linares clipped him, you know. Excuse me. But Haney is willing to get in there and, and battle with you, you know. Uh, Jack says, I definitely agree with your assessment of Regis being elite and he looked good. 
I don't agree with your assessment of Cambosos, who had a Buster Douglas moment and it showed against the old Hughes. And you know what? I just said that. <laughs> you know, he he had his moment against Teofimo Lopez, uh, but he did it. You know, he did it. And he fought the perfect fight for him. And he also... Uh, he fought the perfect fight for him and Tio fought the worst fight he could. And the fight was still close, but he did it. And, you know, and sometimes, um, and thanks again, sometimes, you know, you guys know the sport. Um, sometimes it's all about the moment. You know what I mean? Sometimes it, it, I said this about, uh, Tim Zhu yesterday. You know what I mean? It just, Something that was not planned, a freak accident happened, and it happened very early in the fight, and you still tried to win. But unfortunately, Fundora, those little subtle improvements that he took in that fight, especially with his jab, won him the fight. You know, and this is why we have rematches and trilogies and stuff like that. Sometimes we don't get them. Um, but it's all about being disciplined. You know, I think certain fighters, I've said this about Sean Porter a lot. I think Sean Porter was never the most technically sound fighter. I think towards the end of his career, I think he became a lot more technically sound. Like when he fought Spence, when he fought Ugas, when he fought Danny Garcia, at one point he was just all physical, being rough, aggressive. Um, but then he got to a point where he started to box a little bit more. You know what I mean? But I think the, my point on him is him just being a disciplined fighter is what won him a lot of fights and got him to the top. You know, being a champion more than once and um, just, just being disciplined. You know, there are fighters that are, I think, more talented, like an Errol Spence. You know, I just don't think he lacks. I think he lacks the discipline. And Tia Fimo, unfortunately, he was going, he had stuff going on outside the ring with um, his, his wife. Um, he had health issues. He had COVID. Uh, they 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 had uh, promotion issues. Was it going to be on DAZN? Was it going to be with Top Rank? Was it going to be with Triller? It had got um, rescheduled a whole bunch of times. And then you go into the fight and your corner is telling you all the wrong shit to do. And you're following those orders from your pops. So I think anything, everything that went wrong, went wrong that night. That could have went wrong, went wrong that night. And I think everything that could have went right for George, keeping his composure, getting hit with big shots early. George has a phenomenal chin because a lot of other fighters would have been knocked out with the punches that Tio landed again. I don't want to completely re take away what George did that night. You know what I mean? Like, I think many of us believe that Tio wasn't on his end game, but I don't want to dismiss what George did. Just like I don't want to dismiss what Fundora did last week. I, I don't like doing that because it's not right. Like, George went in there and fought him. You know what I mean? And got knocked down too and got back up. You know what I mean? So I think we we can't just dismiss those things. You know, sometimes it's your night and it was his night. And he worked for it, you know? Uh, yeah, so I think that's that's the what I want to say on that. Um, but getting back to the fight again, <laughs> um, I think my major concern with Ryan is the, the, the technical disadvantages that he has, the mistakes, um, his eagerness to want to get the, the, the rush to knock out. You know what I mean? Just stepping in to, to forcing the left foot, you know? Um, I, I was looking a little bit at the Tank fight. I know Tank is different. He's a, a southpaw and everything. Um, but I was looking at the Tank fight, and it seemed it seemed it, it, I was just noticing how easy Tank was able to just get underneath him and step him around him and turn him and keep Ryan in in these bad positions when throwing. You know what I mean? Um, Tank would just step underneath him, move to his right, and 
Ryan would get caught in positions where he's trying to throw the right hand, but Tank is on his left and he's twisting around. You know what I mean? He wasn't pivoting. He wasn't moving with him. I think these are little things that are important factors. You know what I mean? Um, with Haney, one thing, even if you think Lloyd and Loma won the fight, one thing about Haney is as superior as Loma's footwork is to compare to a lot because they're so quick. Haney was able to pivot and follow him when Loma would try to turn him and step around him. You know, Loma had so much. If you go back to the Nicholas Walters fight. And shout out to Lope, uh, Nicholas Walters just won a fight. I saw it a couple of days later. Uh, he, he won against uh, who who he win against uh, fighter a lot. Joseph Adorno. I saw that fight the other day. Um, but I saw it a couple of days after. And uh, salute to him for being back in the game. You know what I mean? I think he won like some kind of uh, lightweight trinket title. You know, now I don't think he competes against the top tier lightweights, but good win for him. But anyway, going back to my point, when Loma was fighting a guy like Nicholas Walters, for example, it, Walters just could not, he didn't have the feet to follow Loma. So Loma is stepping around you and you don't have the feet to keep up with him and pivot with him, he'll put you in a position where by the time you turn, he's already throwing combos on you and you don't see where they're coming from because you're his, the, the angle is off, you know? And when I was watching Ryan, again, Ryan steps in, throws the hook. He doesn't care whether his foot is on the outside. He likes it to be on the inside because he it's 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 in it's a good position to land it but defensively is is a bad position because your head is right there to get hit and he doesn't seem to care he's so eager to land it he's just throwing it you know and he's not his one of his form of defenses is just jumping out or just turning his back if you notice if you watch his fights when he steps in to try to either land a hook or land a right hand. When he's when he's looking like to defend himself to whatever is being thrown back at him, he'll throw his guard up and he'll like turn and it turns his turns his back away from his opponent. And it's bad because it's dangerous. First of all, it's dangerous to do it. You know, defensively is dangerous. Um, because you're you're putting your, yourself in a shell and uh, you're also turning your back to your opponent. But it's also dangerous. I mean, it's also it's bad offensively because now you using that shoulder roll, you're not even putting yourself in a position where you can counter from it. You know what I mean? You're just turning your back completely and you're not even using the, the offensive advantage of rolling the punch and countering it with a short shot. You're just putting yourself in a complete space where you can't do anything. You're putting yourself in danger and you can't even counter. So even if you're watching the Oscar Duarte fight, you're, even though that guy is not an elite fighter, it was like he couldn't even take an advantage of using that shoulder roll. You know what I mean? Is this, it's like, technical disadvantages all over the place there is too many to name um and when you're fighting probably against arguably the most technically sound fighter that you've ever faced in Devin Haney and the guy that has the experience too um you're not going to be a real favorite to win you know and I don't think he improved again at one point I had all three of those guys T.O., Haney, and Ryan. I didn't know who was the best between those three. Um, But Ryan, I'm still unsure. I don't know where to rate him. Could he be rated higher? Yes, he could be. But physically and both mentally, it's like I don't even think he has the discipline in the ring in order to stick with a game plan that works because he's even said it himself that he gets too eager to want to get the knockout and go for, and try to fight. But 
you don't need to have the punch selection. And it's not talk about power. Like, we know Haney is not a big puncher. But I also said to you guys that he might be a bigger puncher at 140 because he doesn't have to drain himself anymore. And we did see that get to see a knockdown with Regis. Like, he busted up Regis pretty bad. Like, Regis, yes, he's lost before to Josh Taylor. Yes, he did look um, bad in his performance right before the Haney fight, which was against, uh, what was his name, uh, Zaria. All right, Danielito Zaria, right? That's an arguable loss, right? He, he arguably lost that fight on points. But no one busted him up like the way Devin Haney did, you know? And that's his first fight up at 140. Uh, he did everything that Zaria did, but in but fought, you know? He didn't do all the extra moving and stuff like that. Like, he fought with a dangerous Regis Progre. One thing about Progre, you can say that he's not – you know, that great of a boxer, you could say that he's 34 years old, but the guy can punch, you know, that's one thing he's known for. Um, I think the problem with pro gray, really, I don't even think it's the age. I think the problem with pro gray is that he's a 140 pounder that is short and has a very, very short reach. And he's just not good at closing the gap. Um, he is not a good inside fighter. You know what I mean? I just think that certain fighters that can keep you on the end of their jab and move well, like Zaria did, like Devin Haney did, um, those are kind of fighters that you're going to just not look good against. You know what I mean? Ryan and Regis Progre would be a good fight. That would be a good fight. You know, because Ryan is not great at controlling distance, in my opinion, either. You know, because he wants to get in there and step in. He's always stepping in, and it causes him to get caught with big shots. That would be a good fight. But I also think that Ryan could land a left hook against a Regis program and hurt him too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Frank said T-Rex arms. <laughs> Jesus says Ryan should have fought Roley. But it doesn't mean nothing, though. Like, let's say he fought Roley. If he beats Roley, what does that mean? You know, like I just said this yesterday. What does it mean? Like you, you beat Roley. It's Roley. You know what I mean? It's still Roley. Like who Roley is. <laughs> he's, he's not a world level fighter. You know, Roley just knows how to get people's attention. He did not beat Jackson Marinas. He did not beat that guy. He did not beat him. He didn't beat Ismail Barroso. <laughs> he didn't beat him neither. You know, I mean, he did better than uh uh this guy, uh Ismail. Who who Ismail knocked out in the last fight in one round? <laughs> he said Roley is the GOAT. <laughs> uh AI says is, is Jose Ramirez better than Ryan? That's my point. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I would have to see that. If Jose Ramirez beat Ryan Garcia, I would not be surprised. But Jose Ramirez would be, if Ryan were to beat Jose, Ryan, that would be by far his best win. By far. By far. Without a doubt. Because Jose's been in there with mad people. He's been in there with mad people. He's been in there with everybody. He's a former champ, unified. Of course, if Ryan wins, he's a superstar. If Ryan were to win this fight, and 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 and, and that's the way I look at it. If Ryan were to win, he will catapult into just being like elite just like that you know what i mean that's just how the game works if he were to win and i don't think he could win on points like that's like that's like i don't think he could win on points i just don't i i just i can't see how that can happen you know i mean for him to win on points he would literally have to drop devin haney like two or three times you know what I mean? 
I, I just, and, and Haney will just keep getting up and the fight continues. You know, I, I, I just can't see him just consistently winning rounds against Haney. Um, you know, but that'll be crazy, you know, because I think Haney is clear. Like, I don't know as far as the gamblers, I, you know, I don't know what the odds are. I didn't look, but that would be a big win. That'd be huge, man. That'd be super huge. That would be a big, I mean, in my opinion, I think that's a huge upset if Ryan were to win next week. Yeah. Uh, but Haney has his flaws, you know, and I think Haney's flaws, you know, I think he's a good defender overall. He's a good defender. Um, I think the strengths of Haney outside of his jab is that he knows how to create great opportunities. Yeah, I was watching a fight with Regis Progre this morning. And I was watching a few. I was watching a little bit of Jorge Linares, a little bit of the George Cambosos win. Um, and he just knows how to like his punch selection, his combinations is not predictable. You know, um, he does so much with the lead hand. You know, and he is able to like I was watching a fight with Regis Progre, like I said, and um Haney had threw a, a he had threw a faint with like a jab faint. He fainted with a jab, right? And Regis reacted. He bit off it by putting his hands up. So Haney steps in with this fainted jab and turned it into an uppercut through the guard of Regis Progre. Now Progre already reacted by putting his hands up, and Haney was able to twist it and throw it into an uppercut. And those are the things that I notice. That this is what I'm saying about like creating opportunities to land, like or you know to land these kind of shots. It's far advanced for what I see from Ryan. You know, Ryan is just step in, throw the right hand. You know, sometimes you'll see a little bit of head control, or he'll use his lead hand as a, a range finder uh, to set up certain shots, or. Or or look as a use it as a blinder, you know. He does some things that a little bit are more like on a basic side. Where I see Haney does things more like advanced things, you know. Where I only see certain elite fighters do, and the adjustments that Haney make in a fight, you know, he doesn't have like one good punch. He has a large variety of punches. You know what I mean? So I think. That when it comes to Haney, these are his strengths. But I think sometimes Haney get caught with good shots because, you know, you can time him. Any fighter can time him. I see George Cambosos uh, time him with a good left hook. You know, Haney trying to lunge in with a leaping left hook. And he likes to keep that, that phone up a lot. But sometimes... It's a little too far back, and there was uh, there's opportunities moments where you'll see him fight certain opponents. George, uh, who's the other guy that I was just talking about? Lenares. Sometimes the glove, the phone is a little too far back. Chin is still exposed, so when he's moving that quickly, this glove is too far back, and if you time him right, you can catch him with the left hook. You know what I mean? So if Ryan, if Ryan fights a little bit more patient, right? Uses his jab because he has a good jab, just doesn't use it that much. If he could fight a disciplined fight, right? Because he's at a disadvantage. Let's just be honest. He doesn't have the skills as Haney, but if he can be a little patient, and we know he wants to land a left hook. Set it up. Wait, wait for those opportunities where Haney is to make a mistake. You know, sometimes when you hook together, because Devin Haney often gets caught while hooking at the same time as his opponent. Sometimes a glove is just not, it's not in the right place. You know what I mean? Sometimes he's, you know, he's trying to defend against a counter. The glove is just, it's not there, you know? 
He can get clipped in the back of the head. Sometimes it's too far back. He can get clipped in the chin. You know, we saw that with Jamel Charlo against Canelo. You know, I think Canelo, I think it was a situation. I was watching like some of the highlights the other day or maybe a couple weeks back. And I saw, I was re-watching some of that fight. And it just popped up on YouTube. And I saw the moment that Canelo dropped Charlo. And it was like a punch where glove, his glove was up, but it wasn't really protecting his chin. And Canelo was able to punch right through it. And it connected. And those are the moments that Ryan needs to look for in this fight. You know what I mean? Um, but if that is if that's if Ryan is patient enough to do it, you know, because I can see Ryan, you know, even if he decides, even if that's part of the game plan, I can see Ryan just getting, you know, it's like he has like anxiety, like he wants to hurry up and get it over with. And he's just gonna press a charge at you and start swinging like a crazy person. That's exactly what happened with Tank. You know, and, and maybe it's because he had health issues or, you know, maybe he had an injury. I don't know. I don't want to go there with that because I don't know if if, if it's true or not. But I, 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 all I know is that I've seen him fight outside of the Oscar Duarte fight. He's being overly aggressive. You know, the Duarte fight, it seemed like he was changing things and trying to figure things out, fighting on the back foot, using a ring a lot. You know, every other few, you know, every few rounds or so, he would change his style a little bit. Um, and none of them looked great. <laughs> but, you know, he, would do, he was doing, he was making adjustments in the ring. But outside of that fight, um, I would say a lot of his fights, he's really itchy and he kind of like presses forward, you know? Yeah, uh, Beth says uh, Ryan just wants to explode with no proper buildup. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. Robert Strauss says Haney is awesome, super talented. Robert also says Ryan might surprise him with a right hand. You know, he might. He he does have a right hand. I don't want to dismiss the right hand because the right hand is there too. But, um, you know, I think with the left hook, um, I think he needs to throw it less. You know, let it be a shock. We know you have it. Stop just overly throwing it, you know. Um, Jesus says, uh, if he gets his shit together, we can get a competitive fight, but we all know it will be two for two or three rounds, then he'll then it'll be Haney from there, you know. Yeah, I think the first round or two can be anybody's rounds, you know. Um, but uh think slowly or surely Haney can do it, and I do think Haney can possibly knock him out or stop him. I think it's possible. You know, I think Haney is stronger at 140. Um, and I said this before the pro-grade fight. I think he's going to be stronger at 140, and he showed us in the pro-grade fight that he was stronger. And, um, you know, Ryan is, you know, I don't think Ryan has the greatest chin. So if Haney was to stop him, um, remember, you got to also remember, Haney loves to go to the body. You know, I mean, that's part of the reason. That is the main reason why he won that Loma fight. Because he committed to the body, you know. And that's where that kind of disrupts Loma's rhythm. You know, I think, you know, I, I think I brought that point up even before the fight. You you know, Hona, Loma is a guy that once he's in your space and he can continuously get there, you're in trouble. But if you can go and dig to his body a little bit, that would, would get him out of there, you know. Uh, unfortunately for him, Orlando Salido didn't just go to his body. He went to his balls too. <laughs> he he didn't he 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 did it way different. He did the same thing, but he he overdid it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. AI said, is Haney becoming overrated? Yeah, I, I don't know. If he is, how? Explain. Like, I think he's winning the right fights. And I think he's taking the right fights. I think anybody can lose, though. You know? Uh, if you really think about it, right? Everybody could be overrated. Right? You can make a complaint about every fighter. 
in the top 10, you can say something to dismiss. Like, no one has a perfect resume. No one has, like, you know, sometimes fighters beat fighters based on timing. You know what I mean? Like, you can really literally complain about every fighter. What is Crawford, Inoue, Usyk, Better BF, Haney, Tank, Fury, Joshua, Mayweather, Pacquiao, Marquez, like De La Hoya, everybody. You can say something like, all right, on this fight, he didn't look good. Or this fight, he only won because this fighter was old. You know what I mean? It's just, it's part of the game. You know, it's about what you're doing. Getting these wins, looking impressive doing it. And and, and that's all you can really do. You know, what's up, Keanu? What's good with you, man? Elne says, Haney's going to Oliver McCall this dude. Ryan's going to leave the ring in tears. Well, if Ryan loses the fight, he can either retire and walk away from the sport or he can keep getting big fights. You know, Ryan can still fight and get big fights. Um, especially if he is to perform decent, you know, like if he has moments in the fight, it can still land him a big fight. You know what I mean? Like what's going to stop him from getting an Isaac Cruz fight? You know, like let's say if Ryan were to get knocked out in this fight by Devin Haney. You think Isaac Cruz wouldn't fight him over Sabria Matias? You know, he would still fight Ryan Garcia. Anybody would fight Ryan Garcia if they have the opportunity to. You know, um, it's going to make money. It's going to be an instant uh, pay-per-view. You know, if Ryan loses, Ryan might not even do Isaac Cruz type of fight. He still might fight Roley Romero. They'll still make that shit and make it a pay per view. <laughs> Just remember, you you heard it here first. If Ryan loses, don't be surprised if he still gets Roly. Next, you know. So it, it just might it might happen. Royal says, little known fact, and in one of their last amateur bouts, Ryan Garcia gave Devin Haney two standing eight counts. Apparently, he had him badly stunned. Yeah, that's what they were saying when they were going back and forth. And uh, I think the pressers or the face-offs, face-to-face, one of those things. I did hear Ryan say that. And I think Haney was, like, trying to deny it or some shit. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, listen. Again, um, I'm basing off what they've done in their pro careers. You know, and it could be a factor, you know, like sometimes fighters from the uh, amateurs have certain fighters and numbers, you know what I mean? Um, you know, we know that Devin Haney has had like the better career as a pro so far. He's more accomplished and stuff like we, we, we know all of that, but you know, like, let's just say because they fought so many times, let's just say that Ryan knows what to do against Devin Haney. Even though Devin Haney has improved, right? Because I, I, I've seen the guy improve dramatically from six or seven fights ago. So I'm going to say that I think in the time of watching both, which is roughly around the same amount of time, I probably was watching Devin Haney a little bit earlier than Ryan, but I would say that I think Devin Haney has improved as a fighter. But what I will say is there's guys like Sugar Shane Mosley. We already know where I'm going with this. Vernon Forrest. Vernon Forrest just had his number. You know what I mean? It just, it didn't matter how good Shane was. Phenomenal, lightweight, great welterweight. But he just couldn't do shit against Vernon Forrest. You know? Um. I don't know what that's about, but Vernon always be beat him in the, in, in the amateurs. You know what I mean? And he just couldn't do nothing with this dude. 
You know, I mean, Oscar, like, Shane fought Oscar in his prime. Yet Vernon was rocking Shane, had him hurt repeatedly. You just Some people just know what to do against you, man. And you know what? Devin Haney can go on to beat every single fighter that Ryan loses to. But the triangle effect just doesn't work, man, sometimes. If that guy knows how to beat you, he knows how to beat you. You know what I mean? And maybe that's part of the reason why Ryan was actually eager to take this fight. Outside of, you know, it being a big fight, probably do decent pay-per-view numbers. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, some people, maybe he's really confident in, in thinking that he can get this guy out of here. You know? We'll see next week. Uh, so AI has asked me, so you saying Andy Cruz smokes Keyshawn Davis then? If they were to fight tomorrow, I would be leaning towards Andy Cruz. And that has nothing to do with the amateur history. I would lean towards Andy Cruz. I think Andy Cruz is better. That's That's no amateur fight. That's nothing. I'm talking about... I test for me. I I think Andy Cruz is is freaking phenomenal, bro. <laughs> Yo, that guy is good, <laughs> like really good. You know, that's just me, bro. I like Keyshawn a lot, but. And Keyshaw beats a lot of these younger guys, in my opinion. But yo, Andy Cruz is freaking crazy good, man. Like, he's crazy good, man. And he's starting to really work on his power. Uh, if he starts developing, like, you know, I mean, say in develop, but if he, if he's, you know, if he starts like really punching, he's going to be a fucking problem, bro. Excuse my language. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he did beat Keyshawn. The last fight was when Keyshawn was already pro. All right, and pro and and already. Uh, let's look that up. He was pro. He was already maybe what, five fights in when he took that loss that last time they fought. Uh, that last one was in 2021 in August. So 2021 in August, yeah, Keyshawn already had three pro fights in. All right. Yo, know, but it's still the amateurs, you know what I'm saying? It's like, again, I still see an improvements with Keyshawn in every fight. You know what I mean? I'm seeing improvements. And it's just, it's a different kind of fight. Um, but I just do think that Andy, I mean, that guy is, is good. I like that guy. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that guy. You know, he's good. Um, I can't wait to this. I can't wait to see them fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, everybody's talking about the solar eclipse. <laughs> I don't care, man. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not gonna be out there seeing it. Uh, but yeah, I I, I got I think Haney's gonna win. You know, just like most people, it's no, there's no expert opinion by thinking Devin Haney is going to win. I think Devin Haney has most of the advantages going into the fight. Um, you know, and I, I just don't know. Again, I think the the technically the technic the technical flaws of Ryan, um, and the lack of improvements being made throughout the years and the fights is 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 why I'm going with with Devin Haney. And I just don't think that Ryan is disciplined enough to come up with a plan that's going to work throughout the fight. You know what I mean? Just, it's just my opinion. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I will do my breakdown and, and put it out at some point. You know, I, I wanted to get some, um, responses from you guys and opinions from you guys and, and going in this fight uh jared anderson returns to the ring this weekend so i will probably be on to cover that fight live later this weekend uh, i gotta see who else is on the card but i will uh probably be live for that one 
All right, definitely check out the video I did yesterday, guys. Uh, I was live yesterday. I talked about everything, basically all the fights coming up and uh, some of the most recent fights as well. And um, that's it for today, man. All right, I uh, appreciate you guys for checking in. Thank you, you guys, for um, uh, donating to the channel as well. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Share the video if you haven't. Um, like the video, hit the thumbs up, please. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, have a good day. Peace.